Well, I'd be lying if I said I was enjoying myself yet, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like look at all this, like, look at these prams and luggage and how many things you need when you're traveling with kids and I've got to meet Twine at the shop because she's still working hard at the pop-up. She's literally going to walk straight out the door and straight onto the plane. It's just so hectic getting ready, man. And this guy, and in the process, this guy's fallen over and like, look, he's got this massive lump on his head. He's like smashed his head against like a wooden table in there. Look at all this crap we've got to take. <laughs> Prams. Oh, is that funny? At least you're laughing now, mate. You weren't laughing a second ago. Anyway, we'll get there. This is the beginning of the uh, New Zealand trip. And it's never fun getting to the airport and checking all your bags in with kids. I'm sure some people can relate. So this is the uh, not so fun part. But as soon as we hit the plane, all the luggage is checked in. That's where the, uh, the fun part will begin. Now we're just waiting for the taxi. Maxi taxi, 50% surcharge. <laughs> but it's the only one that can fit all this luggage in it. <laughs> <laughs> However, it squeezes in, it's fun. <laughs> Are you going to the airport? Uh, yep, so we'll go to the airport. We're just going to pick up my wife from uh, Chugan shop. Oh, you Whoa, look at that bump on your head, mate. Hi. You made it. Hi. Hi, <laughs> Hi fishing folk. <laughs> yeah. Um, why has our kid got a massive bump on his head? I know, I'm going to tell what you. What happened? <laughs> That's great. Yeah, yeah. How's everything? Thank you. 19.9. Okay. <laughs> Dialed that one in perfectly. Thanks, you handed him to it. Ah, you just called me a goose for getting out. Good morning, I uh, just went and picked up the hire car. We, hey, we, look, if you ever do uh, New Zealand, there's a thing called Your Drive, and it's like a car sharing thing. And look, I've just picked up my sick ride to Volkswagen, but it's gonna be pretty cool for the family. It's got a station wagon, and most importantly, it's got roof racks, because uh, the hire car places, like, they're expensive to get the racks as well that we needed. But these guys have racks, uh, and this car's gonna cost me like 500 bucks, so how good's that? So I went and picked it up this morning. Our plane got delayed, thanks Jetstar. Made us wait at the airport an extra hour and a half with a very upset baby, actually. Fox is usually a pretty chill dude and they're never really upset, but it was like, by the time we got to the airport, he'd had enough and so it was a bit of a punish. It was sort of our turn as parents to be those parents that have to deal with like a screaming kid, which was not fun. But once he settled down, he eventually went to sleep, which was cool, but yeah, look, we got the uh, leather interior. Very nice. So we'll be cruising around in this car. We'll hit the road this morning. We've got to drive up to Aripara, so apparently it's about five hours up. We've got to pick up the kayak on the way. The guys from Stealth New Zealand let me take a kayak for the two weeks, so we'll get that. We'll put it on the roof racks, and we'll uh, we'll be well on our way, hopefully, up there. Like, all my rods went over with my, uh, my mother-in-law. Here comes the car seat. I better jump off. We'll continue this. Hang on. Good morning, good morning. Yeah, so we made it. Uh, it's pretty amazingly beautiful. Lots of farmland and stuff, which was, you know, it's all cool, but very similar to Australia. But as soon as we hit that gorge, that was pretty uniquely uh, New Zealand and uh, made us feel pretty cool about being here. We sit up in the garage, which is nice, because there's a couple of families all, all here. So that's how close we are, actually. That's uh, the water right there, obviously. Uh, I'm told that you can fish pretty much straight off the beach here. Maybe tomorrow morning I'll have sneak out and have a quick go here. 
But uh, I think today will just be, it's Christmas morning right now, so I'm just waiting for everyone to wake up. <laughs> everyone else is still on uh, Australia time, but I think I've, I've uh, switched over quickly because I'm used to waking up so early all the time. <laughs> You're gonna have to suss out some spots, definitely some spots on the east coast, but we're on the west coast, which uh, didn't necessarily, I don't know if it's gonna be any good for fishing, but uh, I'm told it's pretty good, gets less pressure, so. We'll definitely have a quick trip maybe tomorrow here and then we'll uh, tee up a couple of bigger trips maybe up north and I guess we'll queue Christmas. Oh look they're looking at me from the window now. Someone's up. I'm going to look like an idiot talking to myself on the camera so. Alright. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, welcome to the, the pad. This is where we sort of set up. We're uh, in the garage, actually. Uh, they just built the garage downstairs, so they thought, oh, we'll get the, your family down here, so we've got a bit of space. So uh, just setting everything up. They've given me a uh, heads up that uh, I can catch fish just out off the beach here, and you know, only maybe a K out, so I'm gonna give it a crack tomorrow morning, sneak out. So today's all about Christmas, but uh, while the kids are asleep and everyone's sort of milling around before lunch or early lunch, late dinner, I'm just trying to get a few things set up. So I'll grab the kayak down, rig up a few things. I think I'm just gonna maybe troll a hard body, like a deep diver, and just sort of zigzag around, because I really don't know where the fish are, and I don't have a sounder, so uh, it's gonna be a bit of a hit and miss kind of trip. If I get a live or something, maybe I'll chuck that on and just uh, do a little bit of a drift around. But we'll do a bit of rigging here. And then uh, I guess this video will probably have the uh, little bit of Christmas. Little bit of buggy. How cool's that buggy, eh? Yeah, he's uh, going to take us up to the sand dunes as well. So it's actually kind of a fun first day. And it's nice to not be travelling around now. So it's just been a very enjoyable so far. But we'll get rigged up. I'm not sure what other ride. Maybe I'll take the overhead and rig something up on that as well. For something special like a live bait. But, uh, yeah. We'll give it a crack. Uh, good morning. So it is Boxing Day. And uh, we're gonna give it a quick go. Like, uh, I'm just taking sort of the locals' advice and the guys I'm staying with, and then just gonna give it a go, just like pretty much straight out off the beach and around the point there. I don't have time really, you know, because it's only a day after Christmas, We've got to spend more family time, so we don't have time to do a really long trip anyway, anywhere in particular. And the weather's good, so just a quick morning go, and we'll see if we're gonna at least produce something. Anyway, let's battle. Surf's down, it was up before. Uh, when we first got here yesterday and it had died down to pretty much nothing so there's only one or two coming in here and there so should be a nice easy launch then we're literally not going to go very far so we'll go check it out alright let's feel how cold the water is a little cold <laughs> it's definitely not that bad <laughs> still summer here but it is summer here but it's not quite 
25 degree water and just getting used to it up at uh, the Gold Coast. Easy launch. Too easy. Got to get used to using a flat blade as well. Can feel that flat blade sort of shimmying from side to side as I do each stroke. <laughs> well, we're out on the water in New Zealand. You. Right. Now what? I'm always a bit wary on these trips. You talk it up and you get excited. You think, man, I'm gonna smash fish. You watch YouTube videos and everything and get excited about the possibilities. And then you get here and you realize it's just like everywhere else you fish. You gotta put a bit of time in as a local to really know the area. And it's not always just on. <laughs> you gotta sort of do your time and learn it. So I'm not gonna talk it up as if I'm gonna catch heaps today. This is strictly just a, uh, an exploring trip. <laughs> and we'll see how we go. Got the deep diver. I'm not sure how deep it is around here, so this could actually be too deep a deep diver, but whatever. Figure that out pretty quickly. Might have to change lures. And then we'll flick around some soft plastics and see what happens. And then if we get bored just off the beach, we'll go further and we'll go, uh, we'll go and hit that point. There's the drag on this thing. Too tight, clearly. Yeah. And we've got the lighter sniper rod. So it'll be some fun if I get a big one on this. <laughs> I'll have my work cut out for me. But that's the fun of it all. <laughs> okay, we'll get the plastics and bits out of the back and we'll start flicking around. Just got set up and just did a couple of paddles back and forward and uh, something's bitten off my plastic. I hope it's not some kind of fish like a puffer or a leather jacket that does that because it's uh, not going to be much fun with plastics if it is but anyway. Try this uh, new paddle tail we got here. We'll see what happens. Caught something. We've caught something. First fish in New Zealand, hopefully. Let's not lose it. I at least want to get a look at it. At least want to look at it. What's it gonna be? He's gonna do some more jumping, I'd say. Hey, there he goes. Oh, he's not a bad size. What do we do with him? Is he too big to put on as a livey? It's pretty big. Ah, oh, he's cool. I don't know, what do I do? Should I keep him? Live bait him? Is that like, it's a bit ambitious for a live bait, isn't it? Then again, I have seen some fish take some monster live baits. How's about, we take a photo and release him, and if we get a smaller one. What a good fish, huh? <laughs> Power bait worked. First fish in New Zealand. Let's let this one go for good karma. He is sweet. Could I keep him? He's a bit big for a livey, is he? Maybe not. All right, mate. You're going back in. <laughs> I'm pretty wrapped. At least I got something. And I got some proof of it. All right, mate. In you go. 
All right, we got something. We got something. That's good. That's good. Well, where there's one, there's many more. So it's a pity I broke the tail off that one. It's good to know that even just trolling around, I still was in with a chance because it's starting to feel like I had very little chance of catching anything there because I've got no sound. It's really, you know, you, you really feel like you're sort of flying in the dark. All right. Well, we've lost our little tail. I still you think you could probably catch something on that, but we'll change over. There we go. He was well hooked. There's no way he's flicking that hook. It was wrapped straight up through his bottom jaw. Perfect hooking. And my rusty hook hook here. <laughs> Don't mind rusty hooks as long as they're sharp. So that does the trick. We know that works. <laughs> he just grabbed it straight off the... <laughs> Jeez, oh look there, no, we're in a big school here. Oh look, the other rod's going off now too. <laughs> we're doubled up. <laughs> that was a take and a half. I just had the plastic just dangling down the bottom there. Somebody just come up and smashed it. <laughs> oh, I'm guessing it's just a salmon again. Seems to be have a bit more grunt though. Could be a king. <laughs> Probably a salmon. Oh, 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 look at the size of the king chasing that thing. Holy sh I'm just gonna let him dangle for a bit. A big king just came flying in after that. Oh, come on, I got two baits out now. Well, this, this isn't really counted as a bait, but at least I might have trapped him in. Maybe that one out the back will get something. Big king, big king. Far out, hey? Well, if I was worried about these kawa being a bit like big for baits, <laughs> it's not an issue. You should have seen the size of this kingy that just came flying in. Oh. I hope, I hope, I don't think it will, but I hope it got on, something got on camera. It's just like, uh, so obviously they just had the plastic just dangling there, like only maybe like a metre, just literally just touching the water and this salmon's come up and hit it and it's taken off down the bottom and then all of a sudden as I was winding in, he got, he got, I was like, oh, this feels like a bit of a, a bigger fight, you know, like he's obviously because he's had some monster king chasing him at the same time. Come on, why is this live bait not getting some action? This king could have easily just like slurped that fish in no problems. <laughs> oh man. Well, I'll definitely be in for giving that another go. I'm so pumped, it's just out of control. Like, I just didn't expect such a big fish to just be like milling around. Man, that would have just been the most epic thing ever. Like, ever. <laughs> anyway. We'll keep at it. Let's turn this off. Stop getting so excited, Rod. You didn't catch anything. Mm -hmm. 